In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the Sierpinski pyramid and specifically focus on figuring out the dimension of this pyramid, where remember that dimension for a line is just dimension one, the dimension for a square is dimension two, the dimension of a cube would be three dimensional and so on. And we've looked at in previous videos how to calculate the dimension of self-similar objects, specifically fractals, but also simple shapes as well. And when we consider the scaling factor, what we're dividing each of the side lengths by to create smaller versions of the original, and we consider the number of new pieces that we end up with, we can figure out the total dimension. And if we just redefine those variables where the scaling factor, again, that's essentially what we are dividing each of the side lengths by when we go from one step to the next, we call this one over R. We also have the number of pieces, the number of pieces we create for going from one step to the next, we can call this N, and then the dimension of the object of the fractal, we can call capital D. Then the relationship between these three quantities is that r, when raised to the d power, gives us n, the number of pieces. And for this fractal, we just need to realize what our scaling factor is and how many pieces we end up with going from one step to the next to rewrite the equation and solve for this variable d. Now, notice that when creating this pyramid, just like with the Sierpinski triangle, we take each of these faces and find the midpoints and then connect those midpoints with a line and remove that middle section. Though in this case, we're doing this on all four sides and removing, let me change tools there, we're removing all of this space on the inside, which can be a little bit difficult to visualize. But another way to think about it is that we are taking the original pyramid again, finding all of these midpoints, and essentially scaling each of the side lengths by one half. So now, compared to the original side, these edges here are one half of the original size, and we are then replacing it with five pyramids, four on the bottom and one on top. And that would be true even if we look at one of the smaller ones, so the Second stage, we take each of these five pyramids and we find the midpoints again. We scale each of these side lengths by one half. So now these are one fourth of the original size. And we replace this entire pyramid with five smaller pyramids that are one half of the original size in terms of these side lengths where you have four on the bottom and one on top, and then that process is carried out infinitely many times for each of these pyramids. And we now know our scaling factor, that's one half, and the number of new pyramids we end up with is five. So if our scaling factor is one half and our n value is five, we can say that r is two, since r is the denominator of our scaling factor, and n, the number of pieces, is five, so we can rewrite this equation now. We have that two to the d power is equal to five, and this just becomes a question asking, what power would we raise two to to get five? And this can be rewritten as a logarithm. We can remember that when rewriting this as a logarithm, let me make a little bit more room. We can say that we have log base two, since the base of the logarithm is always the same as the base of the exponential expression. And logarithms are equal to exponents. So the logarithm would be equal to D and then five would be the input of our logarithm. Whatever the exponential equation is equal to is what goes on the inside of the logarithm. So we have log base 205 is equal to D. And again, this is just another way to rephrase 
this equation. We're still asking 2 raised to what power gives us 5, and that missing power we're looking for is d. Now, at this point, we can evaluate this using a calculator, and some calculators will allow you to evaluate logarithms with any base, but many calculators only have buttons for log base 10 or log base e, meaning that we have to rewrite this using the change of base rule. But we can do that. If we have log base 2 of 5, we can do either the common log or base e, the base of the natural log. And using the common log, we can write that log base 10 of 5 is divided by log base 10 of 2. You can always do this. You can change the base to whatever you want as long as it's the same base in these two new logarithms. And usually when the base is 10, we would just write log of whatever the input is, so log 5 over log 2, and the base is implied to be 10. Or we can use the natural log where the base of each of these is e, that number 2.5. 718 and so on it's irrational but we'll write those logarithms as ln which stands for the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 2 and in both cases these are equal to the same number and if we actually plug these into our calculator we will get the irrational number 2.3219 and this number will of course go on forever since it's an irrational number so this is the dimension of this square pyramid here, this Sierpinski pyramid where the base is a square. Now, if we look at the Sierpinski pyramid where it's a triangular pyramid or a tetrahedron, also known as the Sierpinski tetrahedron, then the equation, we will still use this same equation r to the d equals n but the equation will simplify so that we actually don't need to use logarithms we can think it through because the answer will be a whole number and in this case the scaling factor is the same number one over r is still one half because we're following the same process we're finding the midpoint of each of the sides connecting those with lines and removing the middle section from each of the faces and remember, this is the image of what that removed section actually looks like. And each of these side lengths are now one half of the original side length. So over here, these are one half. And every step of the way, they are scaled by half. So these are then one fourth of the original size and so on. And notice that the number of pieces we get going from one step to the next is four since we end up with three of the pyramids on the bottom and one on top which means that our n value is four and we can set up our equation r to the d is equal to n we know that r is equal to two n is four so we have that two raised to the dimension of this Sierpinski tetrahedron is equal to four and we know that 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 times 2 is 4, meaning that our dimension in this case is actually 2.